Hello everyone, it's Dr. Holly Tucker from the Active Family Kitchen. Today we are talking about healthy holiday meals and specifically we're going to feature side dishes. So yesterday I did a video on healthy appetizers. So these are Thanksgiving themed meals um, with some superfoods added in and with some really good wholesome ingredients. Um, that we use when we feed our family. So we like to home make everything um, and really look at the ingredients that we use in our foods and making sure that they are good for um, health. So um, for Thanksgiving, I've mentioned this before, I like to be really traditional when it comes to things. Now if you're popping on the video, just give me a comment or something so I can see because um, I can see when people are there but I, I can't see who it is unless you leave a comment. So um, for Thanksgiving. I will post um, all the recipes that I talk about today after the video. I will go ahead and post them in the comments so you can see them. A lot of them are going to be from paleo um, websites and just because those are going to be the ones that are not going to have the refined um, grains and sugars and dairy in there. So we like to find really good ingredients um, to replace those things that you would traditionally find. So just a little side note. We have a book club that we do um, here in our office and so this month we're reading a book that's called Why We Get Fat and so it's really looking at different cultures and populations of people that when their indigenous foods were taken away um, and those refined um, staples were added in like sugar, flour, and dairy that that's when their health really started to decline. So that is really the big why as to why I'm doing these videos and why I'm trying to encourage people um, to eat, uh, find healthier ways to prepare meals. So let me pull up my menu. So mashed potatoes are a holiday favorite. Um, no exception, exception in our household. So we get um, the small red potatoes and um, boil them ourselves. So I have a recipe that I will post. It actually called for butter potatoes, but you can sub the um, red skin potatoes there. Um, and what we do to make them creamy is we can use a coconut milk. Um, we do still use some butter or ghee in our recipes. Um, this one in particular, let me get it pulled up. Um, we are also going to make a um, mushroom gravy for this. So there's a couple of um, recipes here on the side dishes that are going to use mushrooms in them just because they are absolutely delicious, um, good vitamin D uh, source there. So let me look at our, this is a Whole30 recipe for the mashed potatoes that we found. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I did find several recipes for using cauliflower, um, but I still really like to eat potatoes every once in a while. It's not very often, but we do have potatoes in our house. So, all right. So that is the first one. So, and um, you can, you know, don't have to have any special equipment. We do have a Vitamix, and we do have a small little food processor chopper thing that we use in our house. Um, that, that we use quite often, but you don't have to have those things when you're trying to transition your kitchen to more of a whole food kitchen. Um, you really do have to have a good set of knives um, and be able to, to chop things up. That's probably the biggest requirement there. So, um, oh, there is almond milk in the recipe that I will be posting. So if you have any type of nut allergy or anything like that, you can just sub coconut milk for these. You don't have to use an almond milk. Like I said, that um, mushroom gravy, is going to be on the menu as well. Um, applesauce. So apparently, uh, growing up, we had some really dry turkeys in our house, I guess, because I always dipped um, my turkey in applesauce. So my grandmother would make applesauce, and um, which is absolutely delicious. So it just, it just has to be on the table when it comes to holidays in our house now. So the way I make applesauce, pretty simple. Um, just core apples. I leave the skin on because you get extra nutrients in the skin there. I just put a little bit of water um, in like a medium saucepan and turn, put it on the oven with about six apples in it. Um, 
chop up the apples, put them in there, and just let them cook down until they're pretty much mush. And you can mash them like with a potato masher, or you can put them in the food processor or blender um, and blend it up. I add cinnamon as well. I don't add any sugar to it at all. Apples are pretty sweet, especially once you cook them, which is true for most fruits. Once you cook them, um, you know, the sugar really comes out in the flavor there, and so you don't need to add any sugar to it. I found some recipes that did some maple syrup or some honey, but I really challenge you to just um, cook the apples down and mix in some cinnamon, maybe some clove, um, orange peel, and just uh, see how it tastes. So, uh, green bean casserole is the next thing on the side dish. So this again is something that I grew up with. Um, it mostly came out of cans and boxes though. So when we started transitioning our family and how we eat, I found a really great recipe for the green bean casserole that I make. So we get um, whole raw green beans, um, we get mushrooms, we get the canned coconut milk, and we make our own green bean casserole. Um, I, last year I even made our own um, like fried onions to put on top. So those are pretty much, you get an onion, you're gonna chop it up, um, you're gonna do some type of breading on it, which either can be an almond meal or coconut flour uh, with an egg wash and some seasoning, and you pretty much just bake them until they become crispy, and that becomes your top layer there. So. Obviously a few extra steps to be able to make these homemade, um, but once you realize that you can make them from whole ingredients, um, you realize how much better that they taste. So, um, we're going to do rosemary sweet potatoes this year. So I'm kind of going back and forth. If I want to bake whole sweet potatoes, um, or if I want to chop up the sweet potatoes and roast them. Um, Dr. Miller's going to pop in here. Here's He's my got lunch du jour. We've got uh, uh, quinoa, asparagus, and uh, chicken. He's, he's plated it up just to show it on the video, I'm sure. <laughs> so Perks is having um, a kitchen in your office is that sometimes you get to make lunch, which the downside of that is sometimes we don't ever get out for lunch, but uh, if you've ever been out to our office, you know there's really nothing to eat out here anyway. So. <laughs> um, that's why. That's why we had to build a kitchen, is it so we could uh, make some really good food so that we stay on track. Now, I know not everybody has a kitchen where they work, um, so, you know, doing those, those big meals on the weekends and packing your food is what I didn't really recommend. I know, Alicia, it looks good, right? As soon as we get done with this video, I'm going to be eating the same thing. So, anyways, back to the sweet potatoes. So, I would really just challenge you, next time you're in the grocery store, go pick up one of those big cans of yams turn it around and see what ingredients are in there. Most of the time you're gonna find that they are living in high fructose corn syrup and there's been sugar added to it. You know, my big question here is just why? I don't know why this has become the standard for a meal um, in America. So sweet potatoes are naturally sweet themselves. It is in their name. So if you just cook them and you sprinkle on some cinnamon, they are sweet already. So I don't dump sugar on my sweet potatoes. Um, I definitely don't um, bathe them in corn syrup and I don't think that you should either. So as much as I love to see um, a community coming together and buying ingredients for people that are less fortunate and that are needy and need these things to be able to have a dinner on their Thanksgiving table. Um, I just really cringe when I see, you know, what we are giving to the people that need the best nutrition, which is everybody, um, is really the poorest nutrition. So sweet potatoes, pretty easy to bake. Just poke some holes in them um, with a fork, put them on a baking sheet. Don't even wrap them in foil. Don't do anything like that. Just bake them. Uh, in the oven and cut them up, sprinkle some cinnamon on them, and try those this year. I also really like to mix rosemary, fresh herbs, um, or maybe do like an olive oil toss if you chop them up beforehand and you roast them. So sweet potatoes can go either way. You can keep them sweet, you know, on the clove and cinnamon side and nutmeg, or you can go on the other side and do them savory with herbs and butter and sea salt. So. All right, cranberry sauce. So I know this is, again, another holiday favorite. So the way that we do cranberries is we get a big bag of fresh cranberries and we cook them down on the stove. So you can add, uh, I've got the recipe that I'm going to post that does have sweetening them with honey, but then also cooking them in um, orange juice. So um, we probably won't go the, the extra step to um, buying the oranges and juicing them ourselves. We might, who knows. 
Um, but that is a quick and easy way. If you find a good quality, I would recommend organic orange juice, um, store-bought, that that's how you would cook your cranberries. So they're not going to be jellied or like a jello like you would get in a can, but it is a really good side dish to then add on top of um, your meats or your other starches there. So, um, or you can get really crazy with it. You can add nuts, you can add apples, you can add lots of different things. We've, we've done it all ways. Okay. So last thing, um, and I, either today or tomorrow, I will actually post a link for my recommendations for um, turkey recipe. So that's, I didn't do a whole day just on the turkey, just because, you know, it's a given that you're going to have turkey, but I will post a, recommend, a recipe recommendation for that. Um, but the stuffing, um, I'm going to have to write my own recipe for this because I just could not find exactly what I was looking for. So in years past, we have done a corn or a cornbread uh, base stuffing so we find a gluten-free cornbread mix but those have a lot of added sugar to them so this year we're gonna go no grains um, I want to do mushrooms walnuts celery and apples and acorn squash so instead of having that starchy bread in there I want to do an acorn squash and I some recipes I found for actually stuffing an acorn squash but not all with those ingredients that I want to use so I want to use those ingredients because I like the crunch of a celery, the freshness there, a little bit of sweetness from the apples, adding nuts, walnuts, to, you know, really bring in the healthy fats there. So I want to get those as well. And then mushrooms are just a really good um, all around food that really is just really savory and I like to add it to different side dishes. So I will have to write up a recipe for that. Um, but if you are interested, please go ahead and comment on the video so that when I do post the links to the recipes and, and my recommendations that you get all those notifications automatically. And please share this video. If you know somebody that um, wants to be more of a part of a community of healthy eating and supporting each other and making healthy decisions for you and your family, then please share this video with them and ask them to join our community group, which is called the Active Family Kitchen. Just search for that on Facebook. That's a group that we do our book club out of, um, and that's a group that we are constantly engaging in and trying to help people along their journey um, to healthy eating. So, hope everybody has a good day. Tomorrow we're talking about desserts, so you definitely want to be here for that. It'll be again at 2 o'clock. See you then.